following logarithms. We have the log of 8xy to the fourth. So the first thing that I notice here is that I have three things that I'm adding together inside of a logarithm. I'm multiplying 8 times x times y to the fourth. So I'm going to use my product rule. Okay, my product rule says that if I'm multiplying things inside of a logarithm, I can expand that to be the sum of individual logarithms. So I have the log of 8 plus the log of x plus the log of y to the fourth. Then I need to look at each individual logarithm and see if there's more simplifying to be done. Okay. I cannot do anything else to the log of 8 because it's base 10. 10 to a whole number power is not going to give me 8, so I just have to leave that one as is. Can't do anything else with the log of x. There is something that I can do to the log of y to the fourth. It has an exponent, so I can use my power rule to move that exponent in front of the logarithm. So that is my final answer. Log of 8 plus log of x plus 4 times the log of y. Now I typically don't put the time symbol in there between the 4 and the log, but sometimes I will. Just understand that that is multiplication. You could... The only reason why I would do that is if I could then simplify the log of 2, which I can't in, that, in this case without a calculator. Okay, so how about something that looks like this? The natural log of the square root of x squared plus 5 over x. I just kind of tried to throw a little bit of everything in here. Okay, one thing I am going to go ahead and do to this is I'm going to rewrite that square root as the one-half power because I know that I have a power rule and that radicals can be rewritten as exponents. Okay, I cannot take the square root of x squared plus the square root of 5. That is not how that simplifies, okay? So all I'm going to do is rewrite the square root as the one-half power because I'm going to need to simplify that later. Okay, so now let's expand the logarithm. Okay, it's the natural log, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. We can use these properties with any of our logarithms. The natural log of a quotient is the difference of two natural logs. So the top one goes first. So I've got the natural log of x squared plus 5 to the 1 half minus the natural log of x. And then the only other thing that I can do to this problem is I have an exponent, so I can bring it in front using my power rule. Notice I keep the x squared plus 5 in parentheses just so that it's clear that both those terms are inside the natural log, that it's not the natural log of x squared plus 5 on the end. Now, this is where people like to get a little happy with the, with the expanding. Okay? Um, a lot of times people will want to split this into the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of 5. You can't. That is not the rule. The rule says that if you're multiplying two things inside of the logarithm, you can split them apart, um, not if you're adding two things. That does not come, become the sum of two logarithms. Okay? The logarithm of a sum is not the sum of two logarithms. The logarithm of a product is the sum of two logarithms. Okay? So don't get too happy with that. All right, um, let's look at condensing logarithms. Okay, let's go the other way. Um, let's express this in as few logarithms as possible. Uh, 
Okay, so we have 5 times the natural log of x minus 2, and in parentheses we have the natural log of x plus the natural log of y. So there are a couple of things that jump out to me. Okay, I have a coefficient in front of my first logarithm. I know that that's going to be dealing with the power rule. I have two logarithms right here that are being added together. That's my product rule. Did I just say power, product rule? I meant power rule for the first one. Product rule for the second one. Okay. And then there's a coefficient in front of that. So let me just do this uh, one step at a time, though. Okay. So I'm going to leave that first one for right now because what jumps out to me more is that I'm adding those two logs in parentheses. So the sum of two logs can be rewritten as the log, a single log, of a product. Okay, I can rewrite the natural log of x plus the natural log of y as the natural log of x times y. Now I'm going to deal with the coefficients. Okay, the coefficients are my power rule. When we have coefficients, we can move those up as exponents. So we have the natural log of x to the fifth minus the natural log, and I put the x times y in parentheses for a reason. Because a lot of times if you don't put them in parentheses, when you move that 2, that coefficient of 2 to become a power of 2, if you don't have parentheses, you only apply it to the y, when actually it should be applied to both terms. Now, there's something else that we can do. We can combine this into a single logarithm because we have the difference of two logs. We can express that as the single log of a quotient. natural log of x to the fifth over xy squared. Now we're done with the condensing of the logs, but there is another step of simplifying that we can do here. We have x in the numerator and in the denominator, so we need to simplify that. So before we can simplify that, we need to apply that exponent in the bottom to both terms, xy squared is x squared y squared and then we can use our properties of exponents that says when we're dividing things that have the same base we subtract their exponents so 5 minus 2 is 3 so this all simplifies down to the natural log of x cubed over y squared Let's look at a common log. We have 1 half log of x plus the log of the square root of x minus 3 log of x. Okay, so we have three logarithms. The first two are being added, the third one is being subtracted. Before we can combine the logarithms, you cannot have coefficients. Okay? You must always move your coefficients um, before you can combine logarithms. So we need to move those coefficients using our power rule. So that means we have the log of x to the 1 half plus the log of, I know that's the square root of x right now, I'm going to go ahead and write it. I'm going to express that square root as a power. So it's x to the 1 half. It's kind of interesting. And then move the 3 to become an exponent on the last term. Okay. Our coefficients are gone. So now we can use um, our properties to condense. 
When you have multiple operations, you go in order from left to right. So we're adding those first two logs. So I'm going to write that as the product of a single log. I'll leave that last one on the end for the moment. We need to simplify. X to the one half times X to the one half. When we're multiplying things that have the same base, what do we do with their exponents? Add them. Okay, that's what we did at the beginning of class today. We add those. So one half plus one half is one. So that's just X to the first. <clears throat> now we can combine those two logs when we're subtracting it becomes a quotient it becomes dividing and then we've got X in the top and in the bottom so let's simplify that by subtracting 1 minus 3 is negative 2 but it's negative so it goes in the bottom Or you could look at it as 3 minus 1 is 2, put it where it was bigger. It was bigger in the bottom. Yep. That's the answer. Now, you may see this written as um, if you did this at this step, if you said that was 1 minus 2, which is, or excuse me, 1 minus 3, which was negative 2, you may see this written as negative 2 log of x, possibly. Okay. But those are the same answers. Okay, they are the same answers. They are equivalent. We just use the power rule again. Okay, one more example here. Log base 4 of x minus log base 7 of y. Log base 4 of x minus log base 7 of y. Now, it may seem a little silly to you, but we can't actually do anything with this problem. Okay, I put it up here as an example just to illustrate that you cannot combine logarithms unless they have the same base. If they have different bases, there's nothing we can do to combine them. Okay, cannot be combined. These cannot be combined because they do not have the same base. It's kind of like um, those square root problems that we did when we were simplifying those radical expressions. Okay, you can't add the square root of 2 to the square root of 5. Okay, because the same number is not under the square root or under the cube root, whatever root it may be, it has to be the same number. Same thing with logarithms. They have to have the same base. It's either natural log plus natural log, or common log minus common log, or log base 2 plus something else log base 2. Okay? They have to have the same basis. <clears throat>